Hi there everybody. So today's pa pandemic procrastination project is um, a little primer on research designs. Um, I should probably subtitle this why I hate control groups. But <laughs> what um, this is going to be maybe one, two slides in this presentation and uh, really looking to explore this idea that randomized controlled trials are the gold standard in research. I've said this before too and actually in the entire body of research that's not correct. So I'm going to walk you through the schematic to, to examine what an entire body of research looks like so that you can perhaps figure out where your clinical work fits in here or where your um, your review or research project, your pilot study fits. I'm assuming uh, everybody out there in uh, YouTube land is a student of some sort. Um, so the whole body of research starts out with, uh, it, it's got a logical flow. And, and the logical flow is that some gray-haired professor someplace or some physician someplace or some nurse someplace writes an editorial and they say we think the world should be like this um, maybe a group writes a position paper and so that happens with professional associations those are the folks that are best positioned to write position papers or a cluster of academics and when when they say the world should be thus uh, or there is this really big problem. Um, several people start to do clinical overviews, and the, this is all peer-reviewed research, by the way. Textbooks are a whole different ball of wax. So um, overviews start to appear, and sometimes they're mistitled reviews, and the way you tell the difference is if a review article doesn't have a method section, it's not a review. It's an overview. Always remember that. So just write that down, put a little note here. But someone does an overview, and that overview helps to explain or explore the pathophysiology, available treatments. It aims to identify where some problems are. And maybe along the same lines or, or time as that, but someone else is doing a survey. How big is the problem? How many people does it affect? Is it a small problem for a lot of people, a big problem for a few people? And maybe somewhere in there, someone's going to do a pilot study on available interventions. So that, that, that all that little work happens, and it's very disorganized. Uh, the, the editorial starts with one lab, and if it's a really good idea, uh, then lots of people start to jump on it and get publications. Remember, that's your currency in academia. Um, there may be population-based surveys. There may be data from surveys that can be analyzed and reported. And someone else is going to do some case studies. And maybe you get uh, a case study where you're doing some prospective experimentation, and maybe someone else is going to do a case report about something that happened. So then we move on to focus groups and qualitative research. But meanwhile, you can actually move over to the right-hand side of the slide, and now we get into experimental research. Observational research, case controls, case series, and so gather up a couple case reports or studies and, and, and re report them, or match cases and do some type of experiment. But then you also get to this idea of, oh my gosh, there's a promising treatment or intervention. So let's go ahead and experiment with our treatment or intervention. This is where randomized controlled trials hit the picture. They're only one part, just one part. There also are quasi-experimental studies, single group studies, crossover studies, um, uh, repeated measures fits into quasi-experimental. And so when we look at this whole body of research, what I want you to take away is control groups are only utilized effectively in early phase clinical research. So I'm going to pop to my next slide if I can here. And we're going to pick up in the next, uh, in next presentation with this slide. But this is the clinical trials process. So when you're studying safety of a treatment or you're studying whether it works at all, that's where you need a control group. There's nowhere else you really need it. So flipping back to the body of research, you don't need a control group in a survey. There are natural control groups that are created in observational research kind of over in here. <clears throat> Focus groups don't have control groups. So the idea that, uh, that control groups are needed and needed in all different types of research is really, really faulty. And I'm, I'm hoping to kind of jump on my uh, no placebo soapbox and, and get you thinking. But what also happens is if you're a grad student, maybe if you're an undergrad student, maybe if you're, even if you're early faculty, what tends to happen is um, someone's establishing a line of research or the member the gray-haired person that wrote the editorial, people who work for them, you got one person doing an overview, someone else is doing a review of all the literature, and at some point they have to identify how do we link all this to some sort of study that we can do to get our master's or get our honors diploma or whatever. So what happens is they're instructed to review research and look for opportunity. Now, the easiest way to do that is to gather studies that look like other studies. 
It is much easier to look for your intervention and try to um, compare that to a control group because you have one constant in all the studies and that's the control group. So now let's go back to the beginning of this and walk our way through back pain. So the American College of Physicians uh, uh, issued their clinical practice guidelines based on a literature review. Uh, they've done, I think this is the third issuance of it maybe, they did it a couple years ago, uh, non-pharmacologic interventions for back pain. So I'm from the wellness field, so certainly I've done a lot of work with people on, who have back pain. Yoga is very helpful, massage is very helpful, meditation is very helpful. And so the question is, well, which one of those is different from or better than, and where are the, um, where's, the where's the research to support that? So uh, I might start out on a line of research saying, let's look at massage for back pain. And I'm gonna look at an, over, for an over, first at an overview and look at all the research to try to figure out what, how would you even explain how massage works? What's the mechanisms? What area of body, the body would you massage? What assessments would you perform? And I could publish that as chapter one of a dissertation if I was writing a dissertation. I also would look at surveys to find out who has back pain, population-based studies as well, um, but I also might look at surveys to identify what people do for back pain, what makes it worse, what makes it better. And of course there are case studies and case reports and those are not tremendously illustrative unless they present something unusual with back pain. So no doubt somewhere there's some case, uh, case report where someone treated somebody for back pain for a prolonged period of time only to find out that that person had kidney cancer or endometriosis or something like that. In any event, I march through all my analyses and at some point I think, well, for back pain, you know, I wanna do a, an intervention, I wanna design a study. So I need to get to the point of a pilot study just to test my methods. But the question is, I need to gather up a bunch of studies to figure out what's already been done, what I can replicate or what I could do differently. So I have to go over into randomized controlled trials, quasi-experimental, observational, whoever did any type of experiment and I need to find out what their intervention was, so in this case I'm looking at massage, and what their research question was in their study. Because my question might be, is there any effect of massage at all? And so I would be looking at uh, single group studies, crossover studies, and I would be using a control group to, to find that out. But if my question is, is massage with stretching any different than a massage without stretching for clients with back pain. Then I need to dig into some other study that's used that design. But when I'm designing my study, I don't need a control group because I have two interventions to compare to each other. So when I follow that whole thread through, what's really essential is doing the background reading. And remember, look at my tutorial. Don't read research articles, consume them. <laughs> um, just take out the highlights that you need, but you need to be able to find a way to match the right intervention with the right research question. And I really do think what happens is a lot of master students do, and no disrespect again, because it's easier do a review of randomized controlled trials with a placebo or with a no treatment group and that says oh great then i'm going to replicate this study and so we keep going back into the same little mill of these early phase clinical research designs rather than looking at the bigger picture so hope you enjoyed that and hope it made you think <laughs>